uh, this session is uh, about talking about the message broker and related concepts. So let's see the agenda. So we will talk about some uh, concepts, basic stuff, and, and we'll talk about more about the roadmap and the features and some Q&A. So let's first talk about a, a what's messaging. So messaging basically means you want to get some information piece from one, one point to another, right? So when we try do this kind of stuff, so the most uh, uh, simplest way of doing things is to try RPC style. For example, it could be web services, thrift, rest, that kind of stuff. So when you do RPC, so uh, the, the, it's always going to be request and response style, or the both parties has to be online if otherwise things don't fail. And uh, things are in memory, so uh, if you lose a message, it's gone. But then again, uh, when you try to integrate systems using uh, messaging, uh, uh, this style will not going to work because there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of complexities involved with uh, uh, error handling and that kind of stuff. So there are other possible ways of doing things. So in order to do that, you need to have some kind of middle entity which will take care of some of the stuff for you. So those are the other possibilities. For to do that, we call, call this entity as a broker. So uh, when you do uh, have a broker in between, you can decouple uh, uh, the people who are involved with the, uh, the, the communications, people who send messages, people who receive messages. So it's the decoupling is space and the, the time. So, uh, so you, don't, you will have the, even the people who are in the uh, messaging interaction with not knowing each other as well. So the first uh, concept is to have the queues. Uh, the way a queue works is you send a message to the queue, and there's only one person who will going to receive a message. Let's, let's look at an example. Let's say you have an online store, and uh, then you have a warehouse who will send out uh, orders that you will place uh, to the, uh, the user. So if you do, try to do it uh, using RPC style, then if the warehouse goes down, or maybe there's network failure, you lose messages, right? Orders are lost. So you don't want to have, have that happening. Therefore, you place a, a message broker in between, then you, let's have a queue. So the uh, online store will keep on sending messages to the queue, and there will be order processors in the, some kind of a hardware device, let's say, if, let's assume that, uh, connects to the message broker and take these messages and maybe verify the order and send, ship it to some place and update the stock and acknowledge the message so it will be removed from the queue. So this is basically how the queue works. So you can have more uh, 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 features on top of it, like who can send the message, what's the size of the queue, basically then uh, that kind of stuff. So but then the main concept is this. So the other concept is PubSub, basically topics. What you have here is when you keep on sending messages and there are multiple parties who want to uh, receive messages, each one get uh, their copy as well. So for example, let's say you want to scale out the business. So you want to bring in analytics. Maybe you want to archive all the orders that came in. So what you will do is you will create a subscription for a topic and you basically change the queue and you're gonna change the scheme of uh, communication to a topic in this situation. So keep on sending messages. All the messages, M1, M2, M3, will go to uh, analytic systems and the data archive. As we do that, uh, warehouse also keeps on uh, um, processing orders. So that's how the topic works. Um, so the important aspect is you have the, 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 the consumers and the publishers decoupled, and, uh, and the broker will manage the sending out part for inter in, uh, so in, on behalf of the publisher. So moving on. Now, the contract between the topics is if you are connected, you will get messages. If you are not connected, you will not get messages. But then again, uh, that's a problem when it comes to the warehouse. Suppose there's a hardware failure or maybe the network times out and that kind of stuff. You don't want to be like not processing orders, right? You want to keep the order somewhere safe until you can get back and process that. In order to do that, you have this concept called durable subscription. So what happens here is broker will keep the messages on behalf of the party, the consumer, until it connects back and process. 
So uh, if you don't want messages no more, what you need to do is say and subscribe. You, uh, so the uh, protocols uh, such as AMQP, JMS, or maybe AMQTT all have its own API or the semantics to say uh, how to do the durable subscription. So uh, you can see in the diagram the, the, the order warehouse will do a, a durable subscription while uh, the analytics systems or maybe the data archives also do a non-durable stuff. The reason why or maybe the analytics system don't need that kind of a, a guarantees where it needs to know about all the orders, temporary disconnections are maybe possible. In that situation, you will do not have analytics. But then again, you will guarantee that you will process orders. So th that you can do that here. So uh, moving on. So another concept uh, around the messaging is the delivery guarantees and the acknowledgments. So um, in here, uh, maybe uh, brokers allow with their protocol uh, specific ways to participate in a transaction, for example, JMS transaction kind of thing. Uh, uh, just maybe keep on sending messages, maybe send keep a couple of orders to the uh, message broker, then commit. When you say commit, it will be stored in maybe in a reliable medium. Or maybe you can revert back, it's like say rollback, that kind of stuff. So it's basically a transactional thing. So then uh, if you don't have, need a lot of guarantees about the uh, delivering messages, you can have the at most once delivery. So basically a, a broker will not care about whether the other party receives the message. It's keep on firing messages if the, you don't care whether the other person receives it. So it's maybe fine for an analytic service, but then again, if you want more guarantees, you can switch to at least once. What happens here is uh, the data, uh, the, the person who receives messages needs to acknowledge saying, okay, I got the message. Then only the, uh, the, uh, the broker system will uh, basically remove that resources, uh, or maybe remove the messages from the queue and et cetera. So um, at l then, uh, so how this translates to the, in the picture? For example, data archive. Let's say it's at least one situation. Uh, say the, the the data archive receives a message and it crashes. So it got the message but didn't acknowledge, right? So when it comes online, data uh, the the uh, the broker will send the message again. So there will be another duplication. But that's okay. You will know that will going to happen. But it's in the archive. But that you don't want that to happen when the, in the warehouse. Why? You don't want to deliver the order twice. So the, uh, the, 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 the ideal thing to do here is to have exactly once, but then again, you can prove trying to do exactly once delivery is kind of a very hard in an unreliable transport medium. So, so the practice would be to try to uh, allow the system who's receiving messages to handle duplication message duplications kind of thing, or maybe have messages, have all the information necessary to, uh, to handle the error situation, etc. So that's how it's been done normally. So that's about uh, delivery and the acknowledgement. So uh, let's talk about the error handling a, a little bit. So in this situation, suppose a, 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 the uh, online store keeps on sending orders which is invalid. Let's say the stock uh, 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 quantity is maybe zero, or maybe it sends out a, a, a order for a non-existing product kind of thing. So once the, it hits the uh, warehouse, it might validate the order and may think, okay, this we, I can't process. He may reject the, process, uh, the message. It can, you can do it in a protocol-specific way. So it goes back it still remains in the queue. So when that happens, broker will try to re-deliver re the message again. It hits a certain uh, limit, max delivery attempts. While after that, broker will decide to place that uh, the message in a special place we call dead letter channel. So we call this message poison messages. Why? The reason, for example, let's say you have a queue. The, the, in the front of the queue, you have this erroneous message. It can't be processed by anyone. Then you have all the message queued up, because, uh, but they won't be more processed because you have this message sitting in the front. So the queue is stuck, basically. 
So that because of that, in order to move the queue forward, you, you remove this queue, uh, erroneous message, so then someone goes and inspects it, try to correct it maybe, or maybe uh, 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 try to simply delete it, or maybe reroute it to some other place. So that's how the data leader channel uh, pattern works in terms of the broker. Um, so another concept. Now the business grows. You have two warehouses, uh, one in London, other one in San Francisco. So, uh, so what you want to now do is to try to deliver orders uh, from this part of the world from the London warehouse. Rest of the world, you try to deliver it from the uh, San Francisco. If you want to try to do it, how are you going to do it? This is one typical situation, uh, way of trying to do it. So you have a kind of hierarchy of topics. So let's say order slash book slash SF. If the order is meant to be somewhere in the United States, you place the order in, in, in that queue, that topic hierarchy, to, that, that part, that uh, special topic. Then uh, if the book is meant for somewhere in the UK, you will place it in London. So we keep on doing that from the publisher part. Then we place a, a subscription using a wildcard. So you can see the orders uh, uh, start in SF. So what this will do is broker will try to filter messages based on that string and deliver that to this, that subscription. So what you will get in effect is the ability to process only the orders meant to be either in London or SF at respective places. So uh, what in theory, what this means is you can map out the uh, relations between the data being published into a topic hierarchy, then subscribe to a certain part of the topic of your interest. So that's the uh, uh, hierarchical topics. So when it comes to the, uh, the, uh, the, the vendors and the uh, protocols have their own syntax on how to do the, this kind of filtering, so basically, it depends on how, what the protocol you are using, but the concept is the same. So even though we talk about brokers in, in, in a diagram like you have one icon, when you go and try, try to deploy stuff, it's going to be a cluster, right? So when you have a cluster of brokers, what you will deal with is a distributed queue or maybe a distributed topic. When you have a distributed queue or a topic, what you need to, you should be able to send messages to any of the broker nodes and receive from any, right? So let's think about a situation where you keep on sending 1,000 messages from one connection. It's a highly con concurrent environment, right? So in such a situation, if you try to kind of a, a have a global synchronization, it wouldn't work. Basically, it's prohibitively expensive. Nobody do it. So the guarantee that you are interested in and from mostly provided is the, the, the sequence that you send the messages. For example, let's say uh, order is created. In somehow, in some point, uh, assume the order was immediately updated, and then maybe order is invalidated. When you keep on sending that sequence of messages and, and try to, uh, to kind of uh, receive it from the other, other, other part of it, you don't want to deliver the message where the order was deleted before it got created, right? So that guarantee is given. So then try to enforce some kind of a global guarantee is not going to work. So it's not really, it doesn't even matter even, I would say. So how does that translate to the, uh, the use case? So um, you will have the warehouse. It tries to kind of, the order processing entities will connect to any of the broker nodes, try to receive the messages. And you will have the online store also creating multiple connections to the broker and keep on sending messages. So that's how it would work normally. So another concept, uh, shared subscriptions. Now the, the, the contract in, in topic says that if you connect to a, a, a topic, you'll keep on receiving all the messages. That's right. So, but uh, you can make only one connection and you keep on getting all the messages. Suppose now you want to have multiple connections that were, uh, falls under the same subscription, this is what you will get. It's a shared subscription. So you, in the diagram, you can see that you, M1, M2, M3 goes to the topic. Then there will be two 
uh, groups of uh, consumers who use the same subscription, then you will get messages delivered in this fashion. You're basically low, trying to load balance within the subscription. So uh, a JMS 1.1 don't have this support, but then again, JMS 2 specifically does this. But we don't support JMS 1.1 at least now, so therefore we have a kind of extension by, via configuration, you can enable that, you can uh, get that behavior. So this is typically true if you have a kind of a uh, ESB cluster trying to receive uh, messages from a, a MB node, then uh, if you don't enable shared subscriptions kind of thing, then uh, you will get duplicate messages. Why? Because you, the MB doesn't know whether this connection is uh, represented some the same subscription. So how does that translate to the, uh, the scenario? Now, um, online store will keep on sending messages. And uh, you can have shared subscription, if say, uh, let's say analytic system also, creating multiple connections to load balance for performance reasons, then the data archives too. Then you will have the shared subscription with that filter, uh, with, the, with, with, with the intention of receiving only orders meant to London warehouse, receiving messages. So this is how it looks like in the, uh, in the uh, use case. Moving on. OK, that's uh, kind of the things about the messaging. So most, uh, most of the time, uh, the, uh, uh, we use messaging, uh, message broker, and the ESB in both in combination. More the, one of the frequent uh, the patterns that we get is the, uh, the uh, store and forward. This is that. So you have this component called uh, message store uh, in the ESB will keep on sending messages to a, which it receives from outside to the message broker, it's a queue. Then there's a message processor component which takes out these messages and, uh, and keep on sending to the backend. What you will get here is the uh, ability to throttle messages for a slow consumer and uh, ensure reliable messaging for the, the, uh, the consuming part. So let's talk a little bit of uh, design of the broker. So uh, the, our design mainly focuses on having a, a, a central storage. Why? We, won't, we don't want to uh, uh, route messages in multiple hopes in the network. So that's the approach that we have taken. So uh, then we'll have a kind of a clustering framework. The, the, the Carbon platform uses Hazelcast for that. So all the uh, queues being created, deleted, and subscriptions coming in, and nodes going in, out, that kind of stuff, known to everyone. So there will be metadata exchanged about this information, and it basically allows us to uh, uh, um, send, uh, uh, have the implementation for the uh, distributed queues. So what this gives for the user is a, a, a kind of a linear deployment layout and the relevant concepts. Uh, not a lot of relevant uh, broker-specific concepts here. So uh, if you have a cluster, then uh, if you keep on sending messages, it just should just work. Uh, uh, that's how it should be. So, um, so which brings me to the features that we have right now. We support JMS 1.1, AMQP, MQTT, which is the latest, at least now. And re uh, what we have is a real... Uh, uh, Simplified clustering story with a related concepts. The, the, our rationale is that you will have a database in the enterprise uh, most of the time. So we want to utilize that as a storage scheme. Uh, and uh, uh, we don't support H2 as the uh, production database. But then again, the other stuff, other uh, vendors we support. We have real-time statistics on to figure out uh, 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 read write latencies and inbound outbound rates and etc and you can see that in a GUI with the latest release etc we won't keep on improving these aspects so which brings me to the roadmap so our roadmap is to basically uh, implement AMQP uh, 1.0 and JMS2 and basically more work on the uh, storage uh, improvements and the analytics, there's a major initiative for that because the, the, the now product is basically tooling, analytics, and the runtime. So we'll plan on writing a new GUI on top of the Carbon uh, 5 framework 
And we have planned to uh, basically have implemented the uh, MQTT over WebSockets, which we will release also in the next release. So the differentiator, why it's uh, uh, different? So the, it's basically, again, the clustering story. So, uh, uh, and the, you will have a relational database in, uh, uh, all, already in the, data, uh, in the enterprise. We will utilize that, which leads to simpler cluster deployments and the, and the management aspects. Uh, what the, 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 the diagram below is shows a, a typical uh, clustering modes uh, as kind of a survey in, uh, about the brokers. The first one is the master slave, uh, uh, where you will have a master which will uh, uh, work. If that goes down, the second one takes over, and you will have a distributed queue situation where the, uh, uh, the queue, uh, uh, queue uh, physically resides in one broken node only. If you send a message to a, a request to one place, then it will route it back to the, the original node where the queue has been residing. So then uh, you can have a kind of a, a, a uh, network where you keep on sending messages, then it will keep on routing in the network until it reaches somewhere. So this, all these things have a, a, a pros and cons. Therefore, uh, why, why we kind of have a, um, uh, another way of doing things. We might implement this master-slave uh, 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 mode also in the re later release. Um, yeah. That's